Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. And hey, who says watching cartoons can't be educational? We're proving that right now as we continue honoring rare animated shorts. Here with me to broaden our horizon on the subject is former Nickelodeon studio executive and animation historian Jerry Beck. Glad to have you here, Jerry. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks. Now, coming up, we have some rare animated shorts from the silent screen era. But first, we have one with sound. It's called The Farmerette. It was made during the transition the movie industry was going through from the era of silent films to sound. What makes it so rare? Well, this is a cartoon from the Van Buren studio. They were in New York with uh, Max Fleischer studio was across the street from them. Uh, the Paul Terry studio doing Terry tunes. Um, but before Disney had a studio, right? Yes, wow. yes. And these uh, Van Buren cartoons in the 30s, we're, this first one we're watching, uh, was distributed by RKO. RKO distributed the Van Buren cartoons from the beginning of the silent era uh, till about 1936 when they ended their relationship with Van Buren and started one with Walt Disney. Hmm. So Walt Disney's films, including Snow White and things, were released by RKO after that. Uh, Van Buren was... Uh, uh, a longtime producer, and he was actually uh, pretty old by 1936, so he decided to retire and then shortly after that died. But the cartoons are a lot of fun. They're not quite as uh, sharp and polished as the Max Fleischer studio cartoons, the Popeye Betty Boop type, um, but uh, they're, they're, they've got a lot of energy mm -hmm. and they have a lot of feeling of the time. This cartoon, The Farmerette, features a city character, a, a, a flapper character, kind of like Betty Boop, who comes to a farm to help liven up the lazy farm workers with her jazz age music. And it's, it's, it's just got a lot of movement and a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. Now, we all have heard about how difficult it was adding sound to, to actors right. in movies, uh, working with sound. Was it difficult adding sound to animation in movies? I guess it was a little less difficult, I think. Uh, I say that because basically they would make the film and then they would synchronize the sound live to the picture. And that's difficult. And then later they discovered a, a way to do it kind of semi-reverse where they would record the voice actors mm -hmm. and then animate to the picture. That mm -hmm. made it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Now, where did we get, uh, where did these animated films come from? I mean, have they been sitting in a vault somewhere or? These particular ones are from the collection of a young man in New York City named Tom Stathis, and I really have to give a shout out to him because he got interested at a very young age in collecting silent animation. And that's not something uh, most of us can say we would be interested in at an early age, but he's uh, gone off and researched, collects, uh, assembles these rare films and takes care of them. And uh, he has a great website that I, have to mention the Bray Animation Project that's online and uh, it's a great place to check out and learn about silent animation. So we animation. thank him for that. Yes. Absolutely. Well, let's see the film. Okay. Here it is. One of the early animated shorts with sound about a female feline that helps a goat farmer get his farm up and running. From 1932, The Farmerette. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. Hope you have some popcorn and candy and soda pop close by because we have some more animated shorts headed your way. And since this is when we normally have show our silent Sunday night feature, we thought it would be a lot of fun to bring in some silent animated shorts from the very beginning of animation and movies. Well, back with me to help introduce these shorts and put them into context as a cartoon enthusiast, author, and co-blogger of cartoonbrew.com, Jerry Beck. Welcome, Jerry. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Great to be here. Now we're gonna next bring you three silent animated shorts First, we have Lightning Sketches from 1907, then Haunted Hotel, also from 1907, and The Artist's Dream from 1913. What makes these films so rare? These are films from the beginning of cinema. These are very rare films made by the true pioneers of animation. J. Stewart Blackton is uh, one of our filmmakers here, and he goes back to the early days of the Thomas Edison studio and creating trick films like the kind we're going to see tonight. Uh, he really sort of invented the idea of, of taking a drawing and animating it or, or, or photographing it one frame at a time uh, so that it looks like it's moving by mm -hmm. itself. That was something that hadn't been done before and this was one of the catalysts for a lot of cartoonists to start animating. A lot of the original animators uh, would draw every single thing that you see on screen 
when Windsor McKay started doing films, he would draw the character moving the backgrounds that had to stay still. He had to draw them for every single frame of film. That was kind of crazy. But um, John Randolph Bray, another cartoonist, got into this and he came up with a method to uh, kind, of, kind of a factory method for animation uh, where they, they separated the, what you're going to see on screen into parts. Uh, the drawings that move would be on celluloid over, over a background that would be painted and stay still. Things like that that were standard in the animation business for decades were created by John Bray and uh, start in these early films. Did they, were they celebrated at that time or is it only in, in retrospect that we look back on them? Well, unfortunately, they've been forgotten has been the thing. You know, most people have never heard of these people. But were they celebrated today. back then? Um, yeah, they, they were well known. Uh, J. Stuart Blackton was well known for his trick films. When Bray sold his first film and it got distributed, they wanted more and more. And he started a factory, a studio, the first studio to create animation. Mm. And so all the cartoons said Bray for for years and years and years. Bray and another animator, Earl Hurd, patented the cell and background technique. And anybody who wanted to do that, which was anybody making a cartoon, had to give them credit on their cartoons. So for years and years, even into the early Disney Mickey Mouse cartoons, it says licensed by the Bray Hurd oh, really? technique. Yes. Have to look for that in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, let's look at these movies. Okay. A great batch. Here, have a look, starting with Lightning Sketches and The Haunted Hotel, both from 1907. Those are gonna be followed by The Artist Dream from 1913. Before we begin the segment of Rare Animated Shorts, I do wanna warn you a bit about the first film in the block. It's a short from 1907 called Lightning Sketches. and includes footage of the man who made it, James Stewart Blackton, doing rapid fire drawings, including two of which I have to say are really offensive. Blackton writes two words on a piece of paper, one of them a very offensive word, then he quickly turns those words into stereotypical images of a black man in a minstrel show and a Jewish man. It's pretty hard to watch, and at first we hesitated to show it at all, but decided, yeah, we really should for several reasons. As a prime example of early animation, also to show how blatant and inexcusable racial attitudes were in 1907, also to emphasize how racial stereotyping was drummed into people's heads back then. And finally, to also show how far we've come along since then. If you'd rather not look at the segment, it happens quite early in the film. The entire short only lasts 90 seconds, so go get a drink of water, linger a bit, and we'll see you back here in less than two minutes. Hi, I'm Robert Osborne. We're celebrating our silent Sunday night a little differently right now. Instead of showing silent films starring Charlie Chaplin or Mary Pickford or their peers, we're bringing you some rare animated shorts from the silent era. And here to give us the background about these shorts is producer, blogger at cartoonbrew.com, and animation historian Jerry Beck. Welcome back again, Jerry. I can't think of any other way to spend a Sunday night than this. Thank you, that's very nice. Thank we you. appreciate that. These next three silent animated shorts that we're about to show in order are Down on the Phony Farm, Bobby Bumps Starts for School, and Trip to Mars. These shorts made by people who are visionaries in the animation world and paved the way for all future animators, certainly. Yeah. And these have some names that I'm familiar with, like Max Fleischer and Paul Terry. Uh, Paul Terry. So tell us why these are important. Well, Max Fleischer, he was an inventor, and he, he was also a cartoonist, and that led him to making cartoons in the, in the teens. He had this invention, the rotoscope, and he used it to photograph his brother, Dave, in a clown costume, doing crazy antics. They transferred that live footage to cartoon with the rotoscope and uh, sold a series of Coco the Clown cartoons. Uh, unfortunately, it took so much time to do the live action and the tracing and the this and the that. It was actually faster just to hand animate the cartoon mm. parts. But uh, Max was extremely inventive in all of these films. He's usually coming up with some new crazy idea in live action. You'll see Max Fleischer in live action in these films and uh, usually incorporating Coco into that adventure. In this particular one, he wants to do some astronomy and sends Coco to outer space. Mm. And it's just loaded with great ideas, great visuals. Uh, they were just a lot of fun and probably they're my favorite cartoons of the silent era. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the others. Paul Terry. Mm -hmm. uh, who Terry Toons. Terry Toons from the, from the later years. Down on the Phony Farm is Paul Terry's second film. It's the first cartoon featuring his character Farmer Alfalfa. 
who was, he used all through the 20s and into the 30s and 40s. Um, and Terry's were the cartoons to beat. Disney watched Terry tunes. The animation is just funny to look at. It's well drawn. I mean, it's, 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 it's great. And it's just, this is a great classic example that we're going to see tonight. Yes. Tell me about Bobby Bumps Starts for School. Bobby Bumps. That was a Who's series. Bobby Bumps? <laughs> He's a little boy. He stars in a series of cartoons okay. in the 20s. And uh, they were very popular. They were done by Earl Hurd, who was Bray's partner in the patent for the cells, uh, the cells and background uh, that they licensed out to the other studios. And you'll see a great example of that here uh, in that... Uh, the character it looks like a regular cartoon the way we think of cartoons where the characters are on on the regular backgrounds and stuff I think you'll find this a really funny cartoon well let's have a look at these movies you whet my appetite we now bring you down on the phony farm Bobby Bumps starts for school and trip to Mars Hi, I'm Robert Osborne we have more rare animated shorts from the silent era coming up as we continue celebrating the origins of movie animation here on TCM here to give us some background as an authority on the subject the author of 15 books on animation. He's also a historian at blocker at cartoonbrew.com. He's also a producer, Jerry Beck. Glad you're here, Jerry. Delighted to be here. Interesting subject. Yes. Now, this new batch of animated shorts include Fireman, Save My Child, The Bomb Idea, Sense and Nonsense, and Springtime. Mm -hmm. Now, one is from 1919, the rest of them are from the 1920s, right? Right. So how had animation changed in that period of time? It went from being uh, simple comic strips animated, which is what a lot of the cartoons in the teens are. And those cartoons in the teens, including ones that were original, had more of this comic strip come to life thing. They'd have word balloons. You may see some mm. of these in some of the films tonight. Instead of intertitles, they'd have word balloons, like they were just comic strips on right. the screen. And so now the, the animators were getting more adventurous. Things were getting more exciting. People like... Max Fleischer, Walter Lance, and Walt Disney were incorporating a live action animation in exciting ways in the silent films. Mm -hmm. And so everyone, all these studios and all the animators had their own characters and uh, regular series. The 1919 cartoon we're showing is Mutt and Jeff, one of the comic strip adaptations. Sure. And uh, that was actually done by Bud Fisher, who was the cartoonist of the comic strip. He set up his own studio to do his cartoons. So having a cartoon come out, I think they came out once a week or every other week back then. They actually would churn them out so that, uh, you know, it was, it, people were just, they were in demand. Right, yeah. interesting. We're also gonna see in this block, uh, a Crazy Cat cartoon. The interesting thing to note in this cartoon is that by this time uh, the animators just kind of had their way with the character. The character is a classic. The comic strip is an acknowledged classic with originals hanging in museums by George Harriman. Um, the original cartoons started off as an adaptation of his comic strip. They soon turned into a Felix the Cat-like, since he was a cat, or she was a cat. He was originally crazy. Cat was a, a girl, um, and who was in love with Ignatz, the male mouse. By the twenties, the character had kind of morphed into a male character. Don't ask me how or why. It happens in Hollywood. <laughs> yes, indeed. But it uh, it certainly happened on, on Crazy Cat. Now the last one on the list is very different from the others, right? Well, we're showing Springtime, which is uh, one of the Paul Terry Aesop's fables. This is a little bit later than the Farmer Alfalfa we okay. showed before. And again, it's a great example of, of the kind of film that they were making back then, just full of uh, humor, gags, and uh, uh, the Aesop's fables had a gimmick where at the end of the film there'd be a little words of wisdom, which would be the punchline mm -hmm. of the whole film. Mm -hmm. And it was a, that right there made it one of the most popular things in the 1920s. We're also watching The Bomb Idea, which is part of the Jerry on the Job series by J.R. Bray. J.R. Bray is that pioneer of animation that we've talked about, created the cell technique. He had a studio in the 20s that was the studio, it was the hotbed of, of animation. Uh, either you were an independent who released under Bray or you worked at his studio. And one of his directors at that time, a young and upcoming artist, was a guy named Gregory LaCava, mm -hmm. who later carved out a career in live action. Yes. Became very famous. My man Godfrey. Mm -hmm. And he started on these films. So we're going to see one of those tonight. Interesting. And we should give a shout out again to the man that's responsible for us getting the rights to show Thomas these. Thomas Stathis in New York has uh, two great websites, cartoonsonfilm.com and the uh, Bray Animation Project. Both worth 
going to. So we thank Tom for that. Yes. And now let's see the films. Here are four silent animated shorts, the first from 1919, the rest from the 1920s. Fireman, Save My Child, The Bomb Idea, Sense of Nonsense, and Springtime. 